Last year at the Olympics was a massive year. I was very pumped, very excited, very committed, motivated for the Olympics. And I, I, I got into like some extreme shape. I was so confident I, I was gonna walk away with a gold medal. Um, where we were having like terrific sessions, you know, PBs after each other. It's like I was just gonna pitch up and, you know, do what I need to do and walk away with the gold medal. That's how confident we were. It all came down to the flight to Tokyo and the day before I decided, okay, let's go to Tokyo. Let's see what I got. Let's just go all in. Uh, that was our mindset. Franzel, I was on the phone with Franzel like nonstop and we were talking and, you know, some days I was crying because it, the Olympic dream is getting taken away and I can feel that it's not going to happen because I can't run. I'm in Tokyo, I'm in the village, my race is like in a week and I'm not running. I can't run, it's too sore. Too sore. Too sore. Me and Franzel we were talking often on the phone and you know she was in my corner and she was always saying you know just take it one step at a time, just think about the swim. Get the swim done. That's Henry Schoeman on the inside in 51, the South African. Jump on the bike, get the bike done as best you can. Louis, the first one out from Moya. Polianski is there and Schumann as well. When you hit that run, just see what happens. Sometimes miracle, miracles do happen and you just get through it. So that's what I was riding on and that's what I, I went to Tokyo for, just to have the experience of the Olympic spirit and you know, race for South Africa and you know, just see, see what I got because I believe that even with a sore foot, I would be able to manage something. And you know, like I got to that run and I was running in top five position easily with, the, with the, a bunch of the top five guys. And after five Ks, I just couldn't handle the pain anymore. It was just that simple and I had to pull off. And then another three and you can see him behind Schumann. If I'd run further, I'd I don't know what I, where I'd be right now. Maybe I wouldn't have an ankle, but um, fortunately I stopped because of the pain. And you know, like it's a bitter pull to swallow. It's, it's extremely difficult to not finish a race, especially at the Olympic Games, because you want to go there, you want to finish, you want to, you know, have the the, the whole um, Olympics like spirit, finishing the race and not walking away if I did not finish. So. I come back with no regrets and I think that's the best thing that I could have done, I guess. It's very difficult to support a professional athlete in times of injury and disappointment. It's, it's a very difficult thing because they base their entire life on it. Um, it was difficult for me to see him that way because everything was happening at the same time. Um, he left in the middle of the looting here in Durban and the day he left, I found out I was pregnant. So it was like everything was really overwhelming and it was quite a big thing. Still now, I think back on what I said to him and how I handled him and his trying to motivate him. And I don't know if I did the right thing because I feel in one side, he would have regretted not going to the Olympics and trying because you never know what can happen. And on the other hand, if he didn't go, he wouldn't have got injured. So did I motivate him to do something that he was hesitant to do or did I motivate him despite all odds? My heart broke for him, it really did, because without a single doubt in my mind, and not because he's my husband, he would have won gold. There's no doubt in my mind, he was in perfect shape he was he everything was going for him the heat he was so prepared for it he didn't even feel it he told me so it was devastating for him to come back and I remember speaking to him after the race he was still in like the athlete's tent when he phoned me and he was crying after my race I mean, obviously, I went all in for the for the race in Tokyo, and um, <laughs> sorry, yeah, I went, I went all in for the race in Tokyo, and you know, kind of just 
went for it and you know the, the pain was too bearable to finish so I didn't finish the race but I think in, in the bigger scope of things that could have been like a blessing because uh, if I had finished I probably would have had like zero ankle and zero career left but um, after the race I did another MRI and there was like a fracture almost completely through my talus so it was it was extremely um, extremely bad and you know I was very lucky that I stopped when I did. A bit of a learning curve because you know like sometimes you know the Olympic Games yes it only comes around like three or four times in, in your lifetime but sometimes you've got to think about the body as well and your and future career so it was a big learning curve and uh, yeah it, it just uh, yeah it's, I think like I mean there was nothing else that I could do except you know give it the rest and let it uh, recover and get better. Games uh, in the mindset of winning a gold medal, and you know that that never left me. As much as I felt that I, it didn't feel right uh, to race, I just I don't know that competitiveness just takes over, and I kind of like just push through everything. Um, and I, I feel like I had a little bit of pressure on my shoulders, you know, from everyone back home here in South Africa, uh, my entire team that supports me, and. Yeah, it just felt like uh, I needed to, you know, not let everyone down because, I mean, we had high hopes and expectations and, you know, also having a bronze medal at the previous Olympics. Like, I felt like I needed to prove myself again, but uh, it's a difficult thing because there's so much, like, riding on Olympic Games and you just have to, um, yeah, get through all of that to, before you actually race. Well, to quantify this, you wonder why he's looking amazed. He's never made a podium in a World Triathlon Series race. Fourth was his best prior to today, but he's an Olympic bronze medal winner. Well, everybody expected Richard Murray to try and force a podium finish here. He managed to run himself through into fourth, but 24-year-old Henry Schumann, who's never been on the podium in a WTS race, gets his first medal, and it's a bronze at the Olympics. That's not bad. Our philosophy is that we want to be competitive with the best swimmers in the country, even internationally, like competitive with the best cyclists, competitive with the best runners. And generally, like some of the triathletes, even including myself, we super competitive on the running. Like that's where we find that we need to really excel because triathlon, we finish with the running and that's where you win the races. So it's getting really competitive with the running and we obviously spend a lot of time making sure that we can run fast, but if you're not set up in the swim, uh, you can sometimes lose a race by, you know, being in that lead pack on the bike and, you know, you need to be able to manage yourself on the bike as well. So you need that strength, you need that endurance to be able to be fresh on the run. So it's, it's, it's a juggling act and, you know, like I work cl closely with my coach Joe and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of years that we've kind of fine-tuned the program and, you know, what works for me because every athlete is different. Every athlete comes from different backgrounds. Uh, for me, I come from a swimming background, so I'm fortunate enough to focus on the running aspect where we win the races, where a lot of the other athletes have to kind of focus on the swimming aspect. Henry's whole life is based around triathlon. Every decision he makes is for the good of the sport and what would make him a better athlete and a better person. And it's, it's, quite, it's quite amazing to see how he plans his life accordingly. Like he is so dedicated and so motivated. And he's really such a good role model. He trains harder than anyone I know. And he wouldn't call it a sacrifice, but for normal people like, like us, he sacrifices a lot of things to do what he does. There's no friend chills and parties and all sorts of fun things like that. He kind of makes triathlon fun for himself, which sounds sad, but it's pretty cool. The local people know Mutma Mall. Um, you could be pretty good in Mutma Mall. I mean, um, 
they swim a, a triathlon in about 17 minutes, 17, 18 minutes, you can be, you've got to be top five in mid -mark. So then you know you've got the swimming path right. Then you get out of the swim and you run for about four or five hundred meters to your bike, you jump on the um, bike and you start cycling like max. Um, to put it in context, if you cannot cycle uh, 40 kilometers um, in about 55 minutes, you can calculate the speed per hour, um, you're not going to be in the pack or with the guys on the, on the bike. And then you've got to get off the bike and run about a 30 minute or faster than 30 minute 10k. Which all of those is times that you can actually go and win or be good in individual races. So that, that's what you've got to train for. And there's no miracle that happened on race day that suddenly I become fast or I do well. You've got to do it in training, lots of times. The season has actually gotten quite long in recent years because he's now expanding to like super sprint events and also middle distance events. So his season has kind of gone from like five, five months to about eight, sometimes nine months of the year. If I have to take you through a, a typical day, like I like to wake up early in the morning, um, get that swim done first thing. Uh, that can be like an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, it can be six to seven Ks of swimming. And then, then I come back home, I have some breakfast, have a, have a cup of coffee, and I head out on the bike. So I like to do like 50% of my cycling indoors, <clears throat> and then so about 50% of it outdoors as well. Do a bit of like specific work indoors, it's nice and controlled. Uh, there's no traffic to worry about. Um, and then obviously when I'm outside, um, outdoors on cycling, I get to do like intervals on like heels or you know work on the, the skill aspect of cycling. And that can generally be between an hour and a half, to two hours. On longer rides, I sometimes hit three, four hours of cycling. And then like, then I generally have like a nice big break, like over lunchtime, I get to, chill with my wife Renzel and uh, my newly addition to the family, Lilia. I was quite concerned becoming a mom and having an extra person to be responsible for because being a, a partner and wife to a professional athlete is it's a big job. It's, it is my job. That's what I do for a living is look after Henry. I love it, I'm very lucky. I'm a lady of leisure. But I was worried how I would be able to make sure Henry's fine and look after a baby. Starting this new chapter in my life with Lilia um, has been quite a big change. Maybe not so much time consuming, but emotionally it's been very exciting. And you know, starting it, like we have this new life form and you know, to have a new addition to the family and you know I, I just feel so proud to become a, a father and you know it's it's always like been a lifelong dream to start a family and you know and here I have this beautiful daughter Lilia and um, it's so nice to be able to spend time with her uh, because I've actually taken some time away from the racing over these couple of months just to make sure that you know I've looked after Franzel during the uh, third trimester of her pregnancy I was able to be here to witness the birth of Lilia and then also just in the beginning to kind of just settle in because it's a big adjustment like uh, we have like new responsibilities and you know it's a lot of hands-on work so I just want to make sure that I'm here for Franzel making sure that I'm helping her and also witnessing the changes that Lilia go through on a day-to-day -day basis and you know if I'm not here I would have missed all of that so I'll, yeah it's, it's very nice um, I, I'm keeping it a very relaxed time of my life right now and then uh, in a couple of months I'll be out there racing again.